John Mortensen from PetDoorStore.com and today I'm going to show you how to install a spring-loaded uh, pet door for a sash window. Now these are really really simple about half the time. The other half of the time they can be a little bit of a problem. Um, there are several issues that come up with them and we have numerous solutions for all of the issues. So I'm going to give you an example of a couple of them. But first I'm just going to show you how these things go in uh, in a really basic way. So. Uh, the pet door itself has spring loads on each side, and um, so it just automatically adjusts the width to whatever you need, and you lift up your window, set this in the track, close the window down on top of it, and then there's some weather stripping. You've got weather strip that's a rolled up piece of foam, and that goes on the top here. Nicer doors will come with more of this, and then you can put another strip on the bottom as well to get a, a better seal between the, uh, the pet door and the window frame on the bottom. And then they come with uh, this piece. This is uh, called a draft stopper. This is peel and stick tape. This piece is flexible, uh, and it's basically like a squeegee blade. So you can put this in two places. You can put it on the outside window facing in, or you can put it on top of the inside window facing out. But what it does is, since your window is open now to accept the pet door, there used to be this frame and this frame lined up, and there's a little felt seal in there that seals everything up. Now that you've got it open, I'll show you, I can fish this right down through the hole there, and that's a spot where air can go right in between the two panes of glass and into the house. So on this particular window, there's two big locks on the top, so if I put that this piece on the top, I'd have to notch this out so that uh, it would clear the locks. So the easiest thing for me to do is to go to the outside and stick it to the bottom of the window with the squeegee blade facing in. You really don't want the squeegee blade pushing hard against the window. Um, you just want it to just touch the other side and all it's really supposed to do is block the wind from going through. It's not trying to clean the window or anything like that. If you're lucky enough to have a pet door, or a, a window I should say, where the pet door is, is thin enough to just slide right into the sides. That's basically it. Um, you know, the spring loads work that way. The other one, the OptiView, kind of does the same thing. It has a piece here that slides back and forth, but you manually slide it. So you get the thing into the window track, you push the, uh, the piece over into the, into the side there, into the wall, and then you drill a couple of holes and screw it in, top and bottom. And that's, that's all there is to that one, too. So they're basically all the same. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go into all the, the problem areas now, so I'll be right back. Okay, let's talk about locks. So none of these pet doors come with a lock that prevents the window from sliding up and down. Uh, the reason why is because there's so many different types of windows and they all have different tracks. And what might work for one might not work for another, so they just basically say, you figure it out. <laughs> Um, the easiest thing that I like to do is just to put a screw right above the window frame so that if you lift the window, it hits the head of the screw. Now, normally I'd say do that inside the track here where it's not going to be noticeable, but because these are these fold-out windows, there's, there's this big space there, so that just doesn't work with this particular window. So what I do in this case is I put it right in here. So there's a little flange here that's uh, it's actually the track wall for the next window and I know it's hollow in there and I can put a screw right through there and that would prevent the window from moving. Uh, another thing you could do is uh, use an angle bracket and you could set that right on top of here and you could put one screw into this window and another screw into the other window. That would work really well. Uh, another thing you could do is the uh, stick on top of the window thing. Now that's, that could fall out so what I would do in this particular case is I use a piece of this one by two, cut it, and then I'd probably just take a little silicone or something and just stick it in there. I mean, not enough so that it's like glued in there permanently, but you could, you know, you could pull it out if you wanted to remove this, but um, it would be hard for a thief to somehow finagle it out of there. Um, there are pin locks. A pin lock is basically a steel pin. It's usually about two and a half, three inches long. And what those do is drill a hole through the window and into the window on the other side and then you s insert the steel pin and that kind of deadbolts everything together physically connects the window to the frame 
Uh, let's see, there are clamp-on locks that clamp to the track right above the window. Now, that wouldn't work on this one because these tracks are kind of strange, but on most windows that would probably work. I mean, there are a million different ways to do it. But the idea is, if you can't slide the window up, you can't get the pet door out because it's trapped. I mean, it's, it's stuck into the track on the sides and the bottom. So if somebody's going to go to the effort of doing whatever it would take to get that thing out without moving the window, whatever lock you put on there is not going to do any good anyway because they can take a rock, throw it through another window in your house, and climb right in. So uh, it'll keep all but the most determined thieves out if you can prevent the window from sliding up. Okay, so problem number one, your, your pet door is too wide to fit into the track. Now the reason that this would happen is because these newer vinyl windows are made with a feature that allows them to flip down and they flip down so that you can clean the, uh, the outside of the window without having to go to the outside of the house. So I'll show you, you have to lift the window up a little bit and then push these levers and the window folds down so that you can wash the window. The problem with that is that the track, instead of being as wide as the, as the window is, in this case, the track, the window itself, I should say, is about an inch and a quarter wide. The track on my window here is actually, the slot, I should say, is about three quarters of an inch wide. So there's, for, for a thermo sash, for example, there's not enough room to physically fit it in there. It just won't go in there. There's not enough space. So what do you do? Uh, there's a couple different answers. Uh, the first one is to use corner brackets. So I bought this little box of corner brackets from Everbuilt. Corner braces, I guess they called them. I always called them angle brackets. Uh, it was like $2.30 at Home Depot. And what you would do with these is you would, instead of trying to get the pet door into the track, you would just fasten the pet door in place with the corner brackets. And I'll show you how that would work. Up window, pet door in, and you push it all the way to the outside, close the window down on top of it. Now here's your corner brackets. These are, if you can see this, it's just a piece of metal that's bent at a 90 degree angle and it has a hole in each side. And then you just simply put a screw into the into the window frame there and put another screw into the top of the pet door. You probably do this at four places, you know, top and bottom corners on each side. That will, of course, secure the pet door to the window frame so that it's not going to go anywhere. And that's, that's a pretty easy workaround uh, for this problem. All the rest of the installation is just the same as before. Peel and stick the weather stripping and you're done. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is the bridge piece. Now, uh, the edge of the pet door, where the spring-loaded adjuster is, is shaped like an H. And you can take a piece of wood or uh, metal, pretty much anything, and you can slide it into that slot on the top of the H, and then put the other part into your, um, into your window track. So you just get the appropriate thickness of wood, and it just fits right in there. I'll show you that real quick here. Okay, so. Plug into the wall, plug into the side of the pet door. Same thing over here. To the wall and to the side of the pet door. There you go. I mean, that's pretty simple. Um, that will connect uh, basically any thickness slot to the side of the pet door. Again, you could screw these together if you wanted to. It's not wobbly or anything. So I think once you get the, the weather stripping installed and the, and the spring loads tightened down and everything, that's going to be fine just as is, but you're always welcome to, uh, to screw it together. All right, problem number two is that sometimes the uh, knobs on the pet door don't fit with the uh, bottom track. So if, if you saw when I had it installed before, the knobs were pretty much hidden behind the track. Well, sometimes if the pet door is thicker or the track is narrower, 
they won't fit. So when you try to slide it down there, the knob just bumps into the way. I'll kind of show you here. Got this partially disassembled, but but if you had this going in here, and there just wasn't enough room, and this thing was preventing this from going down, then you would need to take the knob off. Now you can't just pull the knob and take it off. Of course, it's got to be a little bit more tricky than that. So, I'll show you how this works. Uh, you have to take the top off, the top or the side, I should say. It's uh, just an H-shaped piece of metal, and it's just held on with two screws. There's one on each side. So a Phillips head screwdriver, take it out, and then you take the screw and put it back in. Okay? And the reason that you do this is because you actually need to push the post all the way down in and actually a little bit past flush in order to get the knob out. So I'm going to turn this sideways to show you. If you get it to the right height, it just slides right out. There's no, there's no big uh, effort involved. It should just slide right in and out. And then when you put it back in, you got to get it lined up just right so that the, the post will co come back around. There we go. So, uh, so these are not easy or not difficult to, to take off. You just have to know the trick that it has to go past flush. If you just push it flush, you're never going to get it out of there. Um, I believe the thermo sash actually does work if you if you go flush, but but this fast sash does not. And see, this whole thing just comes right out of here. So it's a pretty slick design, but you got to know the trick. If you don't know the trick, you never get this thing out. And there you go. All right. So uh, I'm going to put that back on and show you something else. Okay, so suppose you have a thermo sash and it has a spring load on one end and not the other. Um, how can you get that in if it wouldn't plug into the wall? Well, what you do is take a small piece of wood. I've got here a, a one by two. I would actually use a one by one if I was really doing this. But what you do is you cut it to the height of the door, just like that, and drill a couple of holes down the sides and then screw it together. Now you can see on this framing here, there's a little wall between the, um, the, the exterior of the frame and the part where the glass is held. I think that's true of this side piece too. Uh, yeah, it looks like it is. So if you're drilling into this and you slip, you know, if you go through and you bam and you, you hit the other side, you're not going to break the glass because you're going to hit an aluminum wall in there before you actually get to the glass. So take your piece of wood, screw it onto the side. Now that will plug in and then do the same thing on the other side. Pretty simple.